Hey everyone, Austin here, and welcome to another one of my tales. Today, we're going on an adventure through the Game Maker Studio 2 dimension. Well, and Game Maker Studio regular, possibly. And I hope you have a great time. Now, I don't exactly know what I'm going to do, because unfortunately, Ryan wasn't able to make it to this video, so I'm just going to have to wing it, and I'm going to start out by playing through Time Tales for you guys, and because it's kind of glitchy, or because I haven't actually tested in a while, I'm going to be kind of fixing it as I go, but I'm also going to be taking uh, suggestions, comments, and things like that. Or if anybody has any questions about Game Maker, I've kind of learned a lot about it over the several years that I've been using it. So, if you guys have any questions, I'll be watching the live chat. Just gonna run this real quick. Oh, and I'm also going to be in testing mode because I've been using testing mode to jump around a little bit uh, during gameplay of it, but I can, you know, test stuff a little bit easier. I'll be showing that off in a little bit. Part of the reason why I'm doing this too is because I've kind of been having some issues with uh, other people downloading it on Game Jolt, and I'm I'm kind of doing this as a sort of warning for that that I'm still trying to work on that, and hopefully I figure it out. But if I don't, just gonna show this off anyway, so people know how much of it I have built up to now. So of course you can go over to controls first and. This is literally, <laughs> in my programming laziness, this is just a screenshot of the controls in the new game page, but I wanted to make it accessible to everybody. So you have, you can actually use Waz or arrow keys to move, space bar to interact or attack, Q to open the menu, left click and space bar to talk to characters in general interactions, and you can actually run in this as well by holding down the shift key. But you're kind of limited to how much you can do it in battle. Oh yeah, and that comes up every time you get to this screen. So. I could, I have a save file that I kind of started already, but we're just going to go to a new game. And I could just leave it at frisk. But there's kind of some easter eggs that I'll explore a little bit later. But right now, I'm just going to type in my own name. Really doesn't matter. And here's the controls again. So, start. And I'm going to do my best to try to read through it. Hi, Casey. Thanks for stopping by. I'm just doing a playthrough of, of this game that I built. And, uh... Because I was having some issues with it on the actual game jolt. So, eh. The story started the same, however. A great war occurred between humans and monsters. I can actually skip through this if I wanted to. The humans were victorious and sealed the monsters deep underground. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. The monsters longed to escape to the surface, but needed seven human souls in order to break the barrier. Every now and then, a human would stumble into the monster's world. This continued until the monsters had six souls.
and then Austin, which is the name you entered, the seventh human entered their world and changed everything. But how did everything really end up in this version of the story? Um, I am playing through an Undertale reimagining that I actually made myself called Time Tales. <laughs> Case in point right there, reimagining of Undertale. The story of Flowey, the monster who changed the course of events with his knowledge. A story of Garamond, a mysterious time wielder from another dimension. And a story of stopping an apocalypse. Yeah, I kind of wanted to play through it with Ryan, or the other person who was in my other streams. But, unfortunately I had to go, so I'm just kind of winging it myself right now. So, anyway, you start out here in the ruins, and I've been trying to add more tiles to it, but I only got, like, the first couple of rooms done. And kind of falling behind on it. Uh, yeah, you get a point. I mean, still could. This is a pretty casual, not really all that official live stream, so. Yeah. All right, well, I'll just hold off then. What's up, Lowey? Haven't seen you, only seen you three billion times in other timelines and games and stuff. I don't even, I don't even know if I want to attempt the Flowey voice, but I'll maybe leave it to some other people. But I guess I will read the di dialogue in my normal voice for the characters that I don't really feel like I can voice act all that well. So, howdy, I'm Flowey. Flowey the flower. Oh, it's you. Decided to reset the timeline again, huh? Yep, I'm one of the only ones who knows about the timeline reset, since I have the power to do that as well. Anyway, I don't know what you hope to gain from reliving these events, but hey... As long as you get to keep playing this game, you can do whatever you want. And since you're here, I'll let you in on another new aspect of this timeline. The fight style down here in the underground has changed from the previous timelines you've visited. Let me see. Should I show you how the new system works? I guess I will. Before I take your soul and finally gain the ability to leave this accursed place. Yep, that's why for you. So, this is the new battle menu. It's a lot different from what it used to be. Basic controls are still the same, but you have to move over to a button, or click to activate them. If you don't have time for this, you can move over to the escape, to escape, and select flee to end this early. What would be the fun in that? Anyway, try attacking. Move over to the fight. Once you start attacking, press the space or left click to time your attack position. The trick is to line up the sword icon in the middle with the target you want. Afterwards, I'll try to attack. Unless you like getting hit, avoid it. Although, don't worry about dealing any damage. Due to some physics reason or another, damage seems impossible during this battle. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. That's better. Alright, so basically... It's the same sort of style as Undertale in that there's the four buttons and they have similar things, but the mechanics of how you move to them is a little bit different. So you move over to the fight, and then you press space, and then your sword slides across the screen, and then you press space again to, to line it up with your enemy. So it's kind of similar to the old system, but it's a little bit different at the same time. Okay. Oh, you got to try that once. Let's move on to the next command. Act. Using this command, you can perform various other actions 
Yeah, that's totally a joke. Like, look at an enemy's stats or talk to them. Don't waste too much time talking, though, since in this world, it's kill or be killed. But since you actually decided to come back, I'll at least let you try it out. Move over to the act and select talk. And you can also check the enemy stats as well. Flowery the Flower. HP, 100 of 100. Attack, 1. Defense, 5. An adorable talking flower? And then you go to talk. You ask Flowery why he's giving you a tutorial if he doesn't care much for talking. Um, well, that's none of your business. Yeah, and then he totally just attacks you off to the side there, but he can't do any damage to you in the tutorial anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Well, that's the basics of it anyway. What? Items? You can use them to restore health and boost other stats. You can also press the Q key to open the menu outside of battle to look at the items you have, along with how strong you are and some other things. What? You're wondering what Q is? Don't worry. I'm sure someone else knows exactly what it means. You can practice as much as you want for now, and exit by going to Escape and then selecting Fleet. So you could pretty much endlessly practice this if you really wanted to. And I'm planning to add in other weapons and attacks and stuff later, but right now you're just kind of stuck with the sword. So then you just go to Escape, and Spare doesn't do anything in this fight, but sometimes does in other fights. Well, that takes care of that. Too bad it won't do you any good. After all the trouble you caused me in the past, in addition to the trouble that you will cause me in the future, I can't afford to let you live. What? You think Toriel will come and save you again, just like before? Not this time. Since I know how these events play out, I blocked the way from her house. So now, she won't be able to get here, or at least not in time to save you. <laughs> Cute flowery laughing sound effect. They might not even be picking up on OBS, but who really cares? What? Why did my attack stop moving? Time slash! Quickly, escape while I keep Flowey frozen. I'll meet you back at the entrance to the underground. And then you can Flowey. Flowey seems frozen. Better escape while you can. Yeah, and also his face kind of... Oh, it doesn't... It's not even... Well, yeah, I guess it does flicker a little bit. But not too bad. Oh man, this room looks... So much better now that I've added the tiles to it. Anyway. So you're the famous seventh human of the Undertale world. Nice to officially meet you. My name is Garamond. You probably haven't seen me before, but I've watched how the events of this world played out many times. I was listening to that conversation you had before, and from the sound of it, both you and Flowey have seen many sides, many endings to this world as well. Anyway, I know my appearance here, after so many timeline replays, is probably surprising to you, but with Flowey trying to change the timeline, I felt like I had no choice. Which brings me to why I'm really here. This world, or rather, this dimension, has a serious threat looming over it. I know that you're on your way to meet Asgore, the king of the underground. I must warn you, however, that after you reach him, a terrible phenomenon will alter this dimension, which causes it to become frozen in time forever. I'm not entirely sure what causes it, but for a disaster so terrible, I've decided to name it the Endgame Apocalypse. What's an apocalypse? Yeah, I actually gave Frisk a voice in this, because there's a reason for it. I have lore and stuff behind all that later, but... Oh, an apocalypse is an ending event that... Wait, you can talk? Since when? Since always. Si ah. Since always. I can 
run and wield a sword. I can talk too. Man, I don't I do not have a good Frisk voice. I'm just gonna go with that though. Fair enough. Anyways, my question for you is simple. Will you help me find out how to stop this event? You can actually say no to it, but it gives you like three chances to redeem yourself. Are you sure? If I fail to succeed alone, this whole dimension can freeze in time. So I'm actually going to say yes. The only thing that changes is a certain scene that happens later on. There's not really like... I haven't built out any of the endings yet, so just going to keep going with it. I need to stop saying that too, but... You will? Thank you so much. This world may just be saved yet. We'll first need to get out of the ruins, so let's go to where Flowey blocked the path to Toriel's house and see if we can't clear it. I don't know what will happen now that he's changed the course of events, but between the two of us, we should be able to stop both him and the Endgame Apocalypse. Can we just call it the EGA? A Endgame, whatever you called it. It's too long and hard to pronounce. Um, yeah, sure. Anyway, let's get moving. So, off we go. Start the journey, escape the ruins. I think it's kind of interesting how I'm streaming my own game because I can actually point out to you guys all the little secrets and stuff that you might otherwise miss. But at the same time, it could kind of be spoilers for when I actually get it working on Game Jolt again. So, I'm kind of iffy about people watching this, I guess. Seeing that new enemy here, that leaf bat, fills you with awesomeness. <laughs> Your file has been saved. Yeah, that's basically the save. Yeah, this leaf, and also this leaf bat enemy, uh, one of my friends, Derek, actually came up with the idea for it. And I kind of added it in. And it's actually a full-on, like, Undertale-esque fight. And I'm not going to fight him right now, but I'll come back and cover it later. I'm going to try to get through a lot of the storyline before I end this stream. I guess it, oh yeah, it actually does drag you in the random battles too. Nightmaw appears. So, you can of course fight and then he actually has actions and stuff now too. And just like the original Undertale, you have to figure out the right combination of actions and then it'll unlock the option to spare the enemy or you can just flee from pretty much any battle at least that's how I have it set as right now might change that a little bit later in memory of Kara the misguided child for you you wonder what happened to Kara if the name seems so familiar yeah there's Kind of a lot of references and stuff to previous Undertale characters. And Undertale was also originally made by Toby Fox, and I, it's a really good game, so I uh, should probably check it out sometime. And I have, I'll probably add that in the description of this as well. But, the, yeah, a lot of the characters and stuff. If you haven't played Undertale before, then you might be a little bit in the dark about who they are until later on in the story. Otherwise, you might have some inside knowledge about who they are and stuff. But I still have some twists and things like that, so it'll be kind of new for people who've already played Undertale as well. In memory of Azrael, the prince who's lost saddened us all, Toriel, you vaguely remember trying to save him. Did that really happen? I'm also pretty sure these signs weren't here before. Does Flowey's altering of the timeline have anything to do with them being here? Then you have another sign here. To Muffet's item shop. Items sold for a generous cause. Yep, and you actually have Muffet as the shopkeeper in the ruins. I know that's kind of a bit of a twist, but... I don't have a good Muffet voice, so I'll just read it normally. Hello, dearie. It's I, the one and only spider-endorsing shopkeeper. Keep shopkeeper, Muffet. 
not when his business was dying down, so he thought I'd try a change of venue here in the ruins. Besides, the spiders here still need to be rescued, and we're currently pulling our funds to find a solution to move them to Hotland. I haven't had too many customers as of late, though, so I decided to try my hands in the generic items market. So spend away! Remember that 100% of the profits go to helping spiders across this world, particularly the ones here. So, here's the current shop system for right now. Has your current gold, how much your overall shop total is, and how much gold you have left afterward. You left click on an item to add it to your total. Well, you click on it first, and then it comes up with the description of it. So, rock candy deals 10 HP, and it doesn't boost your stats. Candy that's pretty hard to chew, eat with caution. You click on it, and it adds one to your total, which then adds it to your overall shop total. Then you just hit confirm, and it lowers your golden ass into your inventory. And the gear, of course, is more expensive, and you can actually equip it if you go under the menu. So if you open up your menu, it shows you a whole bunch of other things, like your current party, like who's with traveling with you, so to speak. Your stats. Your... XP, for those who actually know what XP means. Your attack, defense, your gold, your G, your gold, or whatever. Uh, your equipment, which... Yeah, I guess this is one of the glitches at the moment. It, the It's supposed to be displaying a bunch of buttons, but... As I said earlier on, there's gonna be some glitches in it, and I'm probably gonna make another video to... Uh, debug all the glitches that I find in this playthrough. So, there's your items. The Rock Candy Times 1 that I just bought. Your Triumphs. Your Triumphs are basically badges that you get for doing certain stuff in the story. And depending on the Triumphs that you have, you can unlock additional content later on. I haven't really done too much with that yet, but... Um, there's extras, which I'll cover later. There's uh, character descriptions, which is basically a summary of all the major characters that appear. And for people who don't really know Undertale too well, they can go into that to learn more about the characters, the characters and their personalities as they were in Undertale. And then I added in some personal notes about developing the game, which... It's kind of pointless if you're actually watching this video because I'm basically covering just I'm hopefully going to cover everything that they say, but you can take a look at them anyway. And then just go to title screen. You just click on this box and it'll take you back to the title screen. That's basically the menu. Uh, you can interact with this as well. There's a bowl of carrots on the table. I wonder who had the audacity to switch the bowl of candy with something healthy. Yeah, so... A little bit of the lore with this, it's not really an alternate universe because all the characters have like the same personality and stuff. I've been wanting to call it an R.I., which I'm dubbing as a reimagining, because the areas are about the same, but because Flowey kind of changes the story at the beginning, it kind of it changes the layout of all the rooms and stuff as well. So, that's kind of it. So, like this bowl of carrots, for example, it was, in the original Undertale, it was a bowl of candy, and in my game, Time Tales, it's kind of changed into a bowl of carrots. Just, I don't know, change it up, make it a little bit different. And then Muffet's a shopkeeper, as I said before. Of course, that'll be a lot more obvious once I finish adding in all the textures and stuff. But, I got the basics of it anyway. Oh god, why is that black line there? Oh, ch if anyone's keeping track, chalk one up for the, the glitches that I've found while playing through this. Up to... We've gotten up to two so far. This must be where Flowey blocked the path. So weird. Everything is looking so different. Hey, if you don't mind... 
Can we clear this blockade? Just attack it with your sword or something. Yeah, you literally fight a wall. <laughs> oh, glitch number three. The music isn't playing. Anywho. Yeah, you literally just have to attack a wall a little bit. And the wall starts ta talking to you, and then you can basically destroy it in a few hits. It's a little bit more difficult on the third playthrough. And then you destroy the wall, and lo and behold, you find Nap Napstablook under the avalanche. Okay, okay, just stop. I'm getting tired of being polite and lowering my HP. Why are you attacking me anyway? You hate me or something? Oh, I get it. You wanted to go by here. First that flower traps me under an avalanche. Then you come along trying to clear the way. Without even considering how I feel. Well, I'm fine, thanks for asking. Ghosts can't exactly die. So swords and avalanches are all meaningless. Since you want to get by here so badly, I'm going back to my house. I have other songs to remix anyway. You won. You gained zero XP and zero gold. And I know what you guys are probably thinking. How can a ghost get trapped under an avalanche? Well, it's Undertale logic. And in Undertale, things don't always make sense. So just go with it. I mean, he still has headphones on. So maybe he just didn't want to leave his headphones. <laughs> So, Flowery not only caused the avalanche, but that, in turn, changed Naps of Blix's reactions by making him angrier? At least compared to the last timeline. We need to hurry and escape the ruins so we can figure out how to fix all of this. Who knows what other events Flowery's actions will change. Alright, so, in this next room, we got a bit of a puzzle. Oh my god, I'm getting tired of looking into the black lines. It's only, it's only on the grass tiles, though. So... There is something scribbled on the wall. It reads, use the switches to deactivate the locks. So basically, you just use this and it, and when the color is not matching the block tile, it you can walk through it, and then you can clear the way by doing that. Use the switches to move the blocks into place and unlock, and unlock the door. So basically here, you have to you make these blocks solid and not solid in a certain way so that you can have it collide with this and it breaks the wall so that you can walk by. So you just have to time it and then you hit the space bar to interact with it and it flies through here and then it unlocks the wall. And then it gets a little bit harder in this next room. Then space, then space, then space. And then that's the first one. Then there's a second one up here. Oh. Okay, glitch. Well, it's not really, it's kind of a glitch, but glitch number four, I guess. To where you can actually activate this one by mistake if you hit the lever down here. And it tr triggers the blocks in a certain way so that you solve this puzzle at the same time. And then, for this one, you have to hit both of these switches at the same time. So, you hit space, then hit... Oh, I actually screwed up the timing of that. You gotta hit space real quick, then walk over to this button. And there you go. And you have another save. Seeing that there's nothing particularly amazing around here fills you with determination. Your file's been saved. Yeah, literally... When I don't have a specific message in Time Tales, I just have it saying there's nothing particularly interesting around here. And I believe this way is blocked off right now. Some mysterious power is blocking the way. Perhaps you'll be able to go this way later. Alright, so you head up here, and lo and behold, you run into Toriel. Hmm. It's almost time for me to leave the ruins again. I'm almost out of cinnamon for my pie. Yeah, you gotta think about that, guys. Where does Toriel get the ingredients for those pies that she makes? 
So, you gotta assume there's either, like, a store in the ruins, or she actually get, leaves the ruins to pick it up. I feel like I'm kind of <laughs> trying to explain Undertale logic right now. I don't know how well it's gonna work out, but I'm gonna <laughs> try my best. What? Oh! Hello, my child! What are you doing here? This part of the underground hasn't been safe lately. My name is Toriel, and I am the caretaker of the ruins. Or rather... Most of the rooms. The way to the entrance was blocked by an avalanche of some sort. And, and then, yeah, Garamond is technically traveling with you, so he just kind of appears right there. Yeah, we've cleared it out for you, though. You had to pass by there earlier. Oh, I didn't see you there before. Who are you? My name is Garamond, my f and my friend and I are trying to leave the ruins and figure out how to stop this flower monster who caused the avalanche and may cause other such events. Oh, I do recall seeing such a monster around here. So that is who caused the avalanche? Yeah, let us know if you see him again. Of course! You can also come by my house to rest at any time, but I don't get that many visitors. Stay safe, my child. Ignore the terrible grammar. It's intentional. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm a bit too old to be a child, but that's besides the point. Hmm, the exit to the ruins is in Toriel's basement, but we walked pretty far. Let's rest in Toriel's house for a bit before we leave the ruins. We can't afford to spend too much time there, but our journey will take longer if we're worn out anyway. Then we can get out of the ruins once we're rested up. Alright, so save here again. Deciding what path to take fills you with confliction. Okay, so basically... The way these save files work is, if it's not the generic message, then it's literally going to have every other emotional adjective except for determination, until possibly you get to the end. So it's kind of like a joke on how much determination was used in the last game, and I kind of have some different themes that I'm using for it. So for this one, for example, it's confliction, and then some... It'll be like every other word except for determination. Your file has been saved. Now you try to walk up here, but then Garamond interrupts you and he says, Wait, what? That can't be right. Oh, what the heck? Um. <laughs> uh. Okay, Chalk went up for another glitch. Glitch number six. The. Sprite randomly changes to Toriel, and I think I know why that's happening, but I am going to, once again, as I said before, I'm going to fix that at the end of this playthrough. I'm just going to hope that there's no glitch that's so awful that it crashes everything, because then I'm going to be forced to fix it. But, yeah, it's supposed to be Garamond Sprite right there. Huh? What's wrong? Hmm, wonder what I should do. And here is the main decision of the game. The time has come for a decision to be made. Each path will have its own unique outcomes, and each will reveal some knowledge behind the story. However, only by playing all four can the entire truth be revealed. So the question is, which will you pick this time? So I'm going to save again after that cutscene. Chatting with that to take the collection file and save. Now, I unfortunately, as of right now, only have one path built, which is this way. Um, the other paths, though, are basically going to be the equivalents of the different routes, the different endings in the original Undertale, with being pacifist, neutral, and genocide. And the fourth path is actually one that's not really as storyline relevant, which I'm calling King Gamers. Which is because of a Skype group name that I came up with a while ago. So, those are the four different paths. Pacifist, Neutral, Genocide, and King Gamers. And you're not really going to have as much choice in those paths to change your ending. But you are going to be able to cause some different stuff to happen by 
what you how you interact with the enemies and stuff still and then the game will also keep track of which paths you've done already so that when you when you return to do the next one some different events might happen just like the original undertale and i haven't really spoiled anything about undertale too much yet but undertale spoilers warning for those or possible Undertale spoilers warning for those who don't want to get spoiled about Undertale because there are a couple details that might be revealed in this, especially if I go into like the character description in the menu. Um, I'm gonna go AFK for just a second, so I am just gonna mute my audio input. Yeah, apparently I was too lazy and I didn't make an AFK screen for my for my game building thing. So, that's kind of unfortunate. But I shall return in a minute. Till then, enjoy the dining discussion slash It's Raining Somewhere Else remix that I made for the scene. All right, I'm back. Let's see. Open this up. There we go. So, if I walk up to these other paths... What the flip? Okay, glitch number eight. I think. <laughs> Not supposed to be able to walk that way. Hoping I didn't screw anything up by doing that. Can I walk all these other ways, too? Seems like I can. Yeah, I have one room for all the other paths, just so that you can walk to it, but I don't actually have any of the other events, so. Um, I am actually going to reload, because I think that's going to mess up my story progress. Oh yeah, since this is actually a uh, Game Maker Studio video and not just a Time Tales video, I actually have... Game Maker Studio 2 open as well, which is what I'm currently using to build time tales. And I'm going to be doing some tutorial videos and other stuff like that in this as well, eventually. But if you guys have any requests or questions about Game Maker, I've kind of done a lot in it, so I can probably answer them, even though I don't know everything about it, about Game Maker. Alright, go back to load game. There you go. So I'm just going to go this way to start with. Yeah, that's kind of weird. The invisible wall that stops you works going this way, but not the other three directions. So I'm not sure what that's all about. You don't remember this path being here. The small part of you wants to go this way and uncover its secrets. Is this the path you choose? Yep, sh sure. <laughs> so you enter the path of puzzles and battles with some 
other interesting story elements to it. Uh, this, this maze room was actually made by my ideas person slash bug tester Ryan, who has appeared in some of my other wizard streams, so maybe check out some of his content sometime because we kind of we kind of post like similar videos and stuff like that. And I can't really do a voice for Elma here either. Uh, I thought for sure I sensed an elemental star's presence around here. Huh? Oh, hello. I didn't know anyone else was coming this way. Wow, I am not on top of my game. Um, are you okay? You seem kind of lost. Well, you could say that. I'm looking for something that I lost. A star-shaped jewel imbued with power. Anything around here like it? Not around here, no. But I'm pretty sure I saw Garamon carrying something like that around. No, his is different. Wait, you know Garamond? So this is where he ended up. How do you know him? Yeah, I met him earlier. He told me he was trying to stop an apocalypse. He then ran off to investigate something, but never came back. Huh. I'm sure he'll be back eventually. With his, the elemental star he has, he can control time. So, chances are he'll finish whatever he's doing pretty quickly. I, I can't really switch back and forth between the voices all that well. I haven't really had any practice voicing characters all that much, so. My name is Elma, by the way. Garamond and I came here from another dimension looking for elemental stars, which are the jewels imbued with power that I mentioned before. Garamond has one in his possession, but I'm pretty sure there's another one in this world somewhere. I also suspected that it was somewhere up ahead, but there's some weird locks blocking the way. I know you probably have other things to do, but could you help me find this elemental star? And by the way, Elma's supposed to be a girl, by the way. I know that's kind of led to some confusion before, but I'm not really the best at custom drawing characters yet. And I also made Elma before Game Maker Studio 2, so I might try to redesign a couple of the characters later. I could I could get onto a whole story about why the character designs are like this and talk about my other game series, but now nah, we'll save that for another video. Sure, I guess. I could even ask Toriel and the monsters to help. N no please don't. Nobody else can find out that I'm here. I could modify this timeline even further. Again? First Garamond and now this. Why is everything so different now? Alright, I'll keep your secret. Great, thanks. Anyway, I'll meet you up ahead. Hurry, because time is of the essence. What? Where did she go? Well. Nothing else to do but advance, I guess. I'm uh, gonna minimize this for a minute. There we go. Alright, so... <laughs> if you guys don't want to be spoiled by the maze solution, even though it's not, like, that tricky of a maze. Hi, Gia. Thanks for stopping by. I'm just playing through my uh, Undertale reimagining game, Time Tales, since, I don't know why, just felt like, you know, I was kind of having some problems with it on Game Jolt. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Lately I've seen someone new around here, besides you, I mean. They're not a monster, but they don't seem entirely human either. Yeah, the monsters, you can talk to a couple monsters here, but... What? What? You wanna know if any of the monsters around here are d dangerous? N not really. But I heard there's one who's been causing tr trouble lately. They also blocked off the northern pass some time ago. And nobody even remembers where that road leads anyway. Just gonna get through this maze real quick. Mm, talk to Elma again. <sighs> Why are these stupid locks here, too? I can't even teleport past them and... Oh, hey, 
Hey, you should be amazed, I see. You know, I just realized I never got your name. Austin, huh? Kind of sounds familiar, actually. Well, nice to meet you. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out how to break through these magical locks. Let's just say I have a feeling that the elemental star I'm looking for is this way. The problem is, these locks are indestructible, and I can't use my power to get past them either. Hmm. Wait, I'm just stirring up the voice again. Hmm, there has to be a way to unlock it somehow. Well, there is one way. There shouldn't be a skeleton around here who created this roadblock. So maybe if we find him, he can unblock the way. A skeleton? Could it be Papyrus? No idea. I didn't actually get their name, but let's go look for them. I'll check east of here. You go check over by Muffet's shop, which is west of here. Meet me back here. In case you forgot, Muffet's shop is west of the maze, south of the crossroads, and west of the lock puzzles. Yeah, it's like really far back. I kind of wanted to make it a little bit closer, but look for me if you can't find it, and I'll tell you how to get there again. Later. Okay, what? Gone again? Did she teleport? Like, Sans? Ah, uh, what? Did, YouTube keeps saying my stream quality is kind of screwed up, but I don't really think it is. Maybe, though. Oh god, I forgot the retile list. Oops. Okay, glitch number nine, although that's kind of my bad, I guess. Hey, Austin. No sign of him here. Have you looked by Muffet Shop yet? In case you forgot, Muffet Shop is west of the maze, south of the crossroads, and west of the lock holes. I know there's quite a lot of directions, so feel free to talk to me again if you can't find it. <laughs> Honestly, some of the... Oh god, that's screwed up too. Those tiles are messed up as well. You know, sometimes the glitches in time tiles actually are the funniest parts of them all. Of it all, but... At least the save should work. Thinking about who built this monument fills you with intrigue. Your file has been saved. I bet you can still interact with it though. It appears to be a shrine to something. There's a name etched into the stone that is too worn to read, as if someone deliberately tried to remove it. The dedication message is still, however, clearly visible. It reads, Dedicated to creativity, the power to build the world. May it always be honed and never forgotten. Yeah, so the kind of theme of this game, Time Tales, is more focused around creativity rather than determination, like in the original Undertale. But I have all sorts of lore and stuff that I'll be explaining that later. Because you know what they say, or at least what, what the game says. Creativity is what builds the world, but determination is what drives it forward. Oh, look, another tile glitch. <laughs> Trying try to get to a, a really epic quo, and I, and I end up finding another glitch like three seconds after it. Cool. Anyway. Room under renovation. Come back later. I don't... Maybe you can go this way. Nope. Can't go this way. Alright, so I'm going to use my handy run feature, and I'm going to run all the way back to Muffet's shop, back through this maze. Because, you know, this maze is totally amazing. Oh uh, yeah, fun little fact, the It's Raining Somewhere Else dining discussion music still always plays in this room, so if you ever want to listen to it while you're in the ruins, you can just come back to this room. <laughs> hey, Matt. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Sans-esque puns are pretty sensational. <laughs> I'll try not to make too many cringy puns. Alright, run all the way back. 
So then this guy appears here and you have to talk to him. Hello, human. Oh, did the lock trap blocking the way? Good. I put it there. Wait, the barriers around here? You placed them? That must mean you're the skeleton of what path Elmo was trying to unblock. Yes, tremble in fear at the annoyance my power br- Oh, thank goodness, I thought Papyrus was doing it. Which would mean that he somehow found his way into the ruins. Um, you could, you could say that, Matt. I actually built it myself. And it's called Time Tales. And it's on Game Jolt right now, but I was kind of having some issues with ex with people downloading it because of how I'm exporting it. So I decided to make a playthrough of it. Human, how dare you interrupt me? But no, my name isn't Papyrus. Who would be named after words and paper anyway? No, I am Lockshocker, builder of pathways and blocker of roads. My name is infamously known in my dimension, and soon will be in this world as well. Never heard of you. <laughs> insert, insert rage groan right there. <laughs> but wait, you're from another dimension as well? Ah yes, you have much to learn about the changes that have come to this world. But I don't have nearly enough time to explain it to you, as I'm very busy blocking paths across the land, so carry on. Wait, um, there's a path to the east of here that we really need to travel on. Is there any way that you can maybe remove the locks on that one road? What? You dare tell me to not do my job? This, this is unacceptable! <laughs> okay, alright, I'm getting a little over the top there. Human, prepare for battle. I will trap you under so many layers of locks that you'll have no choice but to acknowledge me and my ability. Lock Shocker blocks the way, as usual. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, I. Still having, I'm like less than a quarter of the way there, so it's taking ages. But yeah, it is kind of an Adventure Time reference, actually. But uh, unacceptable. I've actually, for the amount, for the amount of time that it's been, it's been like, actually, God, it's been almost six months already. I just realized that. But, I don't know, I've gotten quite a lot done on it from when I've started, so I'm pretty happy with it. On top of pretty much remixing the entirety of the Undertale soundtrack and making a couple band fights that could be standalone things if I really wanted them to be, so I'm getting there. Although, storyline-wise, I'm still only on the second area, which is Snowden in Snowden Town. So, still got a ways to go on actually building the areas. Anyway, let's fight this guy. Oh, and it, it looks like I'm doing a really good job on these bosses. It's probably because I built the bosses, so I kind of uh, work on a lot. Hey, Giacomo. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I'm playing through uh, my Time Tales game right now. Was kind of was kind of hoping that you'd uh, stop by. Unfortunately, Ryan had to go, so I'm kind of doing this by myself right now. Well, except for you guys, of course. So, all right, fight. Oh, and I totally missed. Great. Yeah, I totally say I'm gonna do good, and then I miss the first attack. Better not get hit by this. Yeah, for anybody who's not familiar with the orange and blue mechanics, if you move while the attack is orange, you don't take damage, and if you stand still when an attack is blue, then you don't take damage. So it kind of leads to some crazy battle mechanics. Oh, hey, Zeno. Thanks for stop stopping by. 
I I need to work on my thanks for stopping by. I feel like I should just say that to everybody, but with more enthusiasm. With more enthusiasm. Jeez. Um, I'm just playing through my Undertale fan game right now. So, or my no, the ultra Undertale uh, reimagining. That's that's the term that I'm gonna use for this. <laughs> Yeah, this is literally the first boss that you encounter on this path, so he's not really all that hard, but... For someone who's inexperienced with timed, or Undertale mechanics, he could get kind of difficult, I suppose. I should probably be reading the dialogue, anyway. Someone has to be there to add additional d content and puzzles at any cost. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, I just... I... <laughs> just my standard, silly, um, unfocused self, I suppose. I just always... Everything that I do on these games, I just try to have fun and make sort of random dialogue. Not like... I don't, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but... Since I'm kind of new to the whole video thing, and I'm also kind of new to voice acting and reading all the dialogue, so just kind of winging it, but I don't, I don't really care how I'm doing on it. I just hope you guys are enjoying it, so. Alright, Zeno, wish you luck on that. What? You think Papyrus had more original chaps? Ha! I'd like to have a talk with this Papyrus sometime. I bet he's not so great. Oh, little do you know, Lock Shocker. Yeah, exactly. You gotta... I gotta start with something. So, Wiz videos... I wanted to start with Wizard 101 videos since I've actually been uh, working on Wiz videos longer than uh, Time Tales and, all, and stuff like that. But... I've also done a couple Undert er, Undertale Remix song videos, and now I'm doing this. So, I might also try to do some Game Maker tutorial videos eventually, too. I'm actually going to miss them intentionally, because there's actually a way you can spare them, and I think I'm going to try to go for the quote-unquote pacifist route, even though it doesn't really change anything to the story right now. Wait, what are you doing? How dare you try to call someone while we're battling? That is one act that I cannot tolerate. Yeah, and the puns are real in the dialogue so far. Because <laughs> there's the act command down here. And act. And there's a whole bunch of... Once I get the snowed in, the puns are just... They're so insane. And I kind of enjoyed... Uh coming up with all the dialogue for all the characters, especially, like, Papyrus and Sans. It's hilarious. <sighs> okay. So once he says that last dialogue, you can actually go in the actions menu and you go to call. You call Papyrus' number. And this, it's assumed, although it's not really stated, that... Everything that happens here, uh, Frisk has already, like, gone through Undertale and played at least one of the other paths. Uh, actually at least played through the pacifist route, because that would explain how they already have a phone, they already have Papyrus's number, and stuff like that. But, so, it's kind of, in a sense, Frisk already knows a lot of the characters in this. But if the person playing it has never played Undertale, then they wouldn't know any of the characters. So it's kind of an interesting dilemma. Oh my god, I'm already worn out from all the voice dialogue, but I gotta try to do some sort of papyrus voice. 
Hello? This is the Great Papyrus speaking. Might I ask who this is? What? A human? I, the Great Papyrus, demand you to give me your location so that I can capture you. Then, I can finally join the Royal Guard and... Wait, you say someone is doubting the greatness of the Great Papyrus? I must speak to them at once. Hey, LS, I got someone on the phone who wants to talk to you. <laughs> hmm? Hello? You, I don't know who you are, or even if you're the person I wanted to talk to. But, if you are, I'm here to inform you that my greatness and puzzles are second to none, and that I am unaffected by your negative comments. Oh, so you must be this papyrus that your friend here mentioned. Wowie, you know who I am? And, and I have another friend I don't even know about. That must mean you're actually one of my envious fans. Right. Well, if you are finished, I have to get back to battling this human now. Now, as a matter of fact, I am not. For you see, irritated papyrus fan... Asgore needs the human soul, so I cannot allow you to fight them. Well, I don't care about his agenda, or yours. It's not like you can do anything to stop me anyway. I see. In that case, despite you being one of my only fans, you leave me no choice but to use my fabled attack. Ha! I'd like to see you try- You're blue now! That's my attack! Yeah, I'm pretty sure the dialogue just froze. Crap. Um. Uh. Shoot. Dang it, it was going so well, too. Uh. Mm. Okay, well, chalk one up for the, for the glitches, I guess. This game is not in any sense glitch-free, so what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna in table. Yeah, I'm all, all about those awkward moments. I've already had like three of them. I really don't care though. It's it's kind of hilarious in all honesty. So I am actually gonna save using test mode here. And I'm gonna hope that works. And I'm gonna close out of it and I'm gonna go back to Game Maker for a minute and try to fix that. Hopefully it doesn't take me ages to find that. Okay, I think it would be under ending text, maybe ending actions. Yeah, I'm literally I'm literally forced to use this font so that it shows up a little better on the live stream. So, um, maybe not ending actions, ending text. I should open up Media Player and have some music playing or something, but... I'm gonna give all my secrets away! <laughs> That's basically what this is. Um, uh, where the heck is that? The Papyrus dialogue. Just look for the dialogue that's in all caps, guys. Which I totally can't find. Maybe it's actually under the object itself. So let me check that out. I also can't really see the chat menu right now, so I'm gonna... There we go. Okay, it should be... I sometimes wonder how I'm able to navigate through half of this without getting lost. Although sometimes I do get lost, so maybe not. Okay, so it should be when he... Goes gets down to no health. It should actually. I guess. I guess it wouldn't be under papyrus. It would actually be under a generic battle object, which is this. Um. Yeah. This. Okay. So what the heck is triggering that text? Origin Commander, Soul from Asgore. Oh, wait, I, I remember now. It's under Tech Cycle. Yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> you can totally recognize the papyrus dialogue by all caps. <laughs> Okay, so that's the dialogue. So... I am going to go over to... I think it's color fade that's actually causing it. Oh, like the uh, fade in effect. So I want to add an event. Destroy. When this object's destroyed, I want to say object text dot skip value equals one. Oh god, that why does that one look suspiciously like a lowercase l? <sighs> okay. So basically, when it destroys after the color fade is over. It should enable be able to skip through the text object again. That's what that one should do. So let's give this another try. Now I can open up the chat again. Yeah, cue Jeopardy music. I would probably put on Jeopardy music, but there could be some copyright issues or something. Yeah, it is kind of interesting, isn't it? Turning a playthrough of a game into, like, a developer play or a developer tutorial sort of thing. I thought it would be kind of different. Alright, so now I want to hit my load anywhere key. I might have to redo that Lock Shocker fight if this breaks. And it definitely broke. <laughs> definitely broke. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna restart that. Oh, I'm kind of I'm kind of sad. Ryan left. He probably would have gotten a kick out of me trying to live stream this while it's breaking. <laughs> Anyway, just go to standard. Oh, don't, don't let me guess. Okay, I I didn't save too far away. Good, good. I just have to walk down this path again. Oh, I didn't. I don't actually think I talked to this monster before. Ribbit, ribbit. What? You want to know if I've seen a skeleton around here? Sure, he did. He passed by here not too long ago. And he left all these lock puzzles lying around. Me. But someone came by and cleared them out, which is actually you, but... Was there, was there a weird wall in the corner there? No, I guess that's just part of the room transition. Oh, I should turn test mode off. Yeah, when you have test mode on, I it makes all of the invisible walls visible. So you can kind of see where all the collisions are happening. Kind of an extra thing for anybody who plays through the game. And I also have it so that once you play through the entirety of the game, you can go back a little ways and talk to Sans, and then it'll tell you how to unlock the uh, test mode so that you can mess around with it. Because, you know, playing through a game may be fun, but trying to do hilarious stuff and breaking the game is just as fun. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk to him right away this time. I am going to go up here and I'm going to save so I don't have to walk all that way again. Alright, I already read through his dialogue. Um, I need to mute for just a sec, so I will be back.
All right, I'm back. Uh, I'm not going to read through this again since I already covered it. <laughs> Wanted to say that again. Thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, I feel kind of awkward going AFK in a middle of a live stream, but can't be helped. Alright, I don't even need the fight. Actually, I'll, I'll cover some of the actions this time. Nice, Thano. I, I don't think I've, I haven't actually ever done the storm quest because my storm on my main account is only like level 45, I think. Alright, so talk, check, acknowledge, and check. Well, let's go to check first. Lock shocker. HP 150 of 150, attack 5, defense 2. A skeleton from another dimension whose job is to block the way. Such an annoying enemy. Totally. Such an annoying enemy. You tried to say something, Lock Shocker, but he seems too preoccupied trying to trap you. Um. I don't think I read that before. I don't know why you want me to unblock this path, but I will never do it. Oh, you got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're. Uh, your blue bar down here is your your uh, run bar, which you can actually run around a little bit faster by holding down the shift key. And you can only use it for so long, and it ad automatically restores during your t turn when the enemy is attacking you, when you're not using it. And I'll also have it eventually so that you can buy items and stuff to restore it. But, don't really have any of those right now, so. Oh, I should've, should've used one of the other actions there. Ah, well. Okay, act. Acknowledge. You say that you're beginning to grasp the responsibility of his duties. Ah, so you're finally coming around. But it's still too late for apologies. Because it's too late to apologize! Okay, let's just stop with that. <laughs> I've already used two two song references in this. So. <laughs> hey, and then you can actually go to Annoy, and it has a different dialogue to it. You say that it's lock magic is annoying and a waste of time. What? Arr, don't confuse me with your words, human. Someone has to be there to add additional content and puzzles at any cost. Oh my god, too many oranges in a row. Yeah, most of the attacks and time kills are actually random as opposed to the main fights in Undertale. They're kind of the same exact pattern, which kind of lets you become better at them over time. Otherwise, people would probably never beat the Sans fight if his attack patterns were kind of random. Alright, uh, go to another action. Hit it in a way again. You say that this lock magic is annoying and waste of time. Ah, I can't stand those words. You'll pay dearly for them. What? You think... Okay, I already read that. Not gonna read over stuff more than once, at least on th the same playthrough of it. Okay, um... I think one more dialogue? Yeah. Okay. Now, I hope it- I really hope it works this time, because it would be a bummer if it stops working again. I'm, I was not really paying attention on that attack right there, but yeah, once again, because this is the first boss, his attacks do, like, pathetic damage. It's almost more like a tutorial battle for the actions and stuff. 
Okay. He called Papyrus' number. I'm not doing the Papyrus voice again until we get to another scene. Except for maybe lines that kind of stand out to me, like, like you're blue now, because that's pretty funny. I figure people really... Actually, I should probably look at something on the live stream here for a sec. Okay, yeah. If people really want to hear my papyrus voice acting again, they can just go back in the stream and listen to it, so... Not like I... Not like I pride myself in having, like, the best papyrus voice, but at least I'm voice acting. Or trying to. It's, it's kind of boring if I don't read any of the dialogue, so. Plus, I could go into a whole discussion about how people learn better with different styles, so they could actually pay attention to the dialogue better if I read it, etc., yada yada, but... It's just the style that I've decided to go with. Okay, so... Oh yeah, the text didn't freeze right there, so I'm guessing I fixed it? Yep, I fixed it. <laughs> yeah, he literally just falls out of the map in the battle ends. Don't mess with Papyrus, who can turn people blue even over a phone call. On. Alright, so, I'll let me finish that. I'm gonna save again. And I'm gonna try to cover the secret content after I get through the main story, unless it's, like, something to interact with that's on the path of the main story. So, like, the secret boss fights and stuff, I'll leave until the end. I don't know why I'm not using the run feature. There's no limit to the run feature if you use it outside of battle, so. I'll save here. A bit of a wall collision glitch there, but I kind of already knew about it. Not really too concerned with it. Yeah, it took ages to get these walls to work properly. The way you can walk on them on a diagonal. You wouldn't think it would be that hard, but spent many hours with Ryan's help and input on it too, trying to get those walls to work and finally got them working. Hey Austin, I didn't know what happened, but the locks seem to be gone now. I'm gonna assume you had something to do with it, so nicely done. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure what's up ahead, but I need to recover the Elemental Star, if there really is one here, at all costs. Alma, can I ask you something? Sure, what is it? Why are you Garamon and these Elemental Stars here? I've never seen that lock enemy before here either. How did you and Garamon end up here after all the timeline resets? Wow, you really know what questions to ask. Unfortunately, I can't answer them, yet. Why were you this perceptive during the previous timelines? Tell me, Austin, why did you decide to come this way? Was it out of curiosity, or was it because you wanted a new challenge? Whatever the case, my reason being here is something far more important. To save an entire dimension. But... Garamon told me about this apocalypse that's going to happen in this dimension, too. What makes you think that your goal is... No. As terrible as what he told you sounds, the apocalypse here doesn't matter. Sure, Garamon... Gar 
God, Jeremon may talk about it as a terrible event, but who do you think caused all of this to begin with? Besides, you and Flower could just keep resetting the timeline to keep this world alive, whereas my Dimensions threat doesn't have that luxury. What? How do you know about Flower and the resets? Let's just say I did some research before I came here. Garamon probably did too. <sighs> That's enough explaining for now. I'm gonna continue exploring up ahead. You're free to do whatever you want now. If you don't want to come along, maybe we'll meet again later on. Thanks for the help, Austin. Let me know if you find that elemental star. Now that you are alone, you feel the presence of an omniscient third person that reflects upon your actions. It seems as if, mm, its presence is masked when talking to certain people, which allows you to speak to them freely. So begins the Time Tales lore that I have developed, but unofficially written anywhere. Yeah, just ignore the the glitch tiling that I have here at the moment. It's funny because I actually I fixed the blocks up here at the top before, but apparently I must have transferred over a version of Game Maker or, or of Time Tales and it must have changed it back or something. Kind of ridiculous, but I'll. It's a pretty easy fix, so I'll worry about it later. So you finally can exit the ruins by going this way. There's a couple of secrets here, but I'm not going to cover them yet. And here we are in Snowden Town with an actually alternate entrance to Snowden. Well, not Snowden Town, Snowden. My mistake. Wondering why you aren't freezing to death fills you with chills. And so begins this, the ice puns that I've come up with. They are super cool. <laughs> I mean, the alternate entrance to Snowden is intentional, but... Hmm, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll... I don't know how much to interact with. Yeah, they're... Yeah, the, the ice jokes are kind of cringy, though. <laughs> believe, believe you've frozen in place, totally. I'll cover all the interaction stuff later, I guess. And then, lo and behold, you run into the Papyrus over here on this bridge. Ah, oh, which means the Papyrus... Dialogue voice continues. <laughs> My newest trap is sure to ensnare any human that comes this way. Um, uh, I might. Well, it's not really the same since Ryan isn't on, but. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the, the game is the, the game is still in its early stages, Matt. So I can always change stuff later. Um, I don't know actually. I was talking with him a little bit ago, though. You just had to go and do something else, I guess. That's kind of why I'm doing this to begin with, because it's the kind of thing that I could manage on my own, whereas I know Wiz stuff is more fun if Ryan's in a, call, in a Skype call with me while I'm doing it, so. Of course, it has been quite some time since one has actually traveled along this path. This path also seems a bit different than what I remember. Now my papyrus voice is a little screwed up. That is exactly what inspired me to make this trap to begin with. 
The next human to come this way will be no match for the amazing trap made by the Great Papyrus. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Is that a human? Oh god, what, what did I hit? Shoot, I might have triggered secret music by mistake. <laughs> anyway. Wait, no, I'm not supposed to be able to trigger it unless test mode is on, though, and it's not. Very suspicious. Human! I don't know how long you've been standing there, but... I, the Great Papyrus, proclaim that you must be captured and brought to King Asgore at once. And there is nobody better to enforce this proclamation than I, the Great Papyrus. You are the key for me to open the door to all of the things I utterly deserve. Respect, recognition, maybe even friends? I will finally become a member of the Royal God. Undyne will be so proud of my accomplishment. And Sans? Wait, where is he? My brother should be on his watch in this area by now. Yeah, that lazy bones probably fell asleep at his station again. But, despite that, human, it's time for the unveiling of my most, newest, most devious trap ever. Ready? And that's it. <laughs> that's it right there. There! What do you think of that? You tell Papyrus that you expected something grander. Aha! That is what you would expect. But in fact, this trap is actually Papyrus Grade Genuine Genius. Trademark Papyrus Grade Genuine Genius. <laughs> Should, nah. Wait, your voice sounds familiar. You are the one who helped me discover that monster trying to ungratify me before, referring to Lock Shopper. I'll have to properly thank you for that later. After I capture you, and thus my glorious narrative explanation about my trap continues. <laughs> You see, because my attack is blue, you have to stay still in order to pass through it. But you have no choice to move in order to cross the bridge. And did I forget to mention these waters will chow you to the bone if you try to swim in them? <laughs> I feel like some people are going to facepalm seeing that, but eh, I don't care. <laughs> it's all for enjoyment. Don't be... Unable to continue progression forever and become weak with exhaustion from trying. The perfect opportunity for me to capture you and take you to Asgore's castle. <laughs> ah, dear lord, that was a lot of dialogue. Ah. Yeah, I, I learned that having... Too much dialogue. It, having messages too long actually makes it harder to read. So after Snowden Town, I'm actually going to be shortening how much dialogue appears on the screen with each message. And it's actually going to... Seems like it's going to help anyway. With reading it. <laughs> Wondering how you were just japed by Papyrus fills you with nyeh <laughs> The file's been saved. <sighs> and I think you also get a triumph from that? Huh. I guess not. I'm supposed to. Might need to look into that. Doesn't exactly hinder your progress at all, so. I think you can interact with this too from the other side, maybe. Probably should have done that. No, you can't. Gonna need to look into that as well. I'm probably gonna make a separate video just debugging Time Tales because it's probably gonna take. A stupid amount of time just to debug all of this. Okay. Then we get the papyrus blocking the way over here with Elma being here. 
Come on, Papyrus. I'm trying to find something important. Can't you just let me pass? <sighs> More Papyrus dialogue. Not a chance, smaller human. I must capture you, and... Yeah, yeah, I know. Take me to Asgore. You already told me all this a few minutes ago when I first came here. Oh, hey, Austin. I was hoping you'd come this way. I might need your help talking some sense into the greatly unreasonable Papyrus. Maybe you can change his mind and talk some sense into him. <laughs> mm. ah, you're starting to sound just like Sans. Wait a minute. Human, how did you get past my ingenious trap so easily? Well, you never blocked the path around the river to the south. Curses! How could I have forgotten about that? My name is Austin, by the way. You don't always have to call me human, Papyrus. I screwed up the voice or whatever. <gasps> eh, well, the name human is always just seems easier to remember. But with this other smaller human here... Smaller human? Really? My name is Elema, and I'm sorry, but I can't wait- What the? <sighs> that was intentional. <laughs> I think I read that a little too slowly there, but... Was that Sans? What is he up to now? And who is that he was fighting? Mm, Garamond. Sorry guys, gotta get going! Sans! I'm coming! You definitely didn't expect any of that to happen. You're sure you'll run into him later though. Yep, totally Sans and Garamond battling right there, and you couldn't really see it, because it was so quick, but that's kind of the idea behind it, so. And now we've arrived at Snowden Town. Seeing such a cheerful town fills you with holiday spirit. Your files must say. Uh, we're almost to the end of the main story, and I can go back and do a lot of the extra content and stuff. Although I have enough extra content where I might turn that into a separate video as well. So I can have three parts to my Time Tales stuff. I don't think I've completely finished adding stuff to Stone and Town. Oh my god, the tiling. Shoot, I forgot I used... I forgot I used, uh, grass tiles here, so the the gray is here and I can't really do anything about it right now. So, I'll need to fix that a little bit later. And I was gonna add in Sans and Papyrus' house, like, right here or something. But, I kind of want to redesign their house a little bit, and I don't want to use the exact copy of the Undertale house, so it's gonna take a little bit longer. Yeah, thanks, Matt. I, uh, I would, I have a couple other things I could play through as well, and also I could, I, I'm, as I said before, I'm trying to incorporate almost like a Game Maker tutorial into it as well, but the Time Tales code is so, uh, complex that I can't really make it any sort of basic tutorial. I can just kind of explain what I'm doing and semi-basic terms, so that's what I'm going for, I guess. Human, I'm glad you're still here. I cannot allow you to leave just yet. I gotta use... Yes. There are still some unexplained events that must be investigated. For one, Sans hasn't been himself lately. I feel like whenever I say Sans or Nihahe with Papyrus, it like immediately allows me to get the perfect voice or at least a better voice down for Papyrus because I'm more used to saying Sans and Nihahe and you're blue now and all of those famous quotes. <laughs> anyway, for one, Sans hasn't been himself lately. He's been after this Garamond character ever since he first met him. 
Normally, Sans wouldn't miss a chance to not work. But lately, he's been so obsessed with finding this person, and he won't even tell me why. Then there's the fact that Asgore visited Snowden recently. He hasn't visited here in quite some time. And him showing up at the same time you did seems very suspicious. Yeah, even lines like very suspicious, I can get the papyrus voice down a little bit better. Then there's you, Gilman. As a master puzzle designer, I can tell you simply want a challenge worthy of your greatness. And you won't rest until you find it. Because of that, I, the great Papyrus, have reached the decision regarding something. Under any other circumstances, I would try to capture you, but... Even though this is going against Undyne's orders, I, the great Papyrus, will travel with you. To ensure you discover a puzzle worthy of your creativity. Of course, there will be many other obstacles along the way. I feel like there should be music playing right now. But between the two of us, they will all be bested. No door will stay locked. No secret undiscovered. Our popularity will be known across the entire underground for our astounding cleverness. Undyne will have no choice but to acknowledge my incredible talents and let me into the royal god. And human, when the other monsters see how amazing your puzzle-solving skills are, they will undoubtedly lose the resolve to capture you. Follow me, human. We must prepare for the journey that's ahead. <laughs> Oh, now the music comes on. Alright, well, that pretty much does it for the story part of it. You've reached the end of the demo. Thank you for playing through what's been built so far. If you find any glitches or have any comments or suggestions, and by the way, I found like 10 glitches in this playthrough, so that's kind of... <laughs> it's kind of interesting. But anyway, feel free to post them in the comment section on GameJolt. Or you can just, you know, like, comment on one of my videos or something like that. That works out too. Um, there is one last thing I want to do here. Then I'm gonna end the live stream for a little bit, and I'm gonna try to fix some of these glitches I came across. Actually, that's kind of cool, too, with the thing about the live stream is any glitches I come across, I kind of have a record of them, so I can kind of use it as a sort of log. Um... I... I, I mean, I could just the, like, garden and stuff like that, but I don't think I'm going to do a live stream of Wiz yet. As I said before, it's not really as fun unless other people are on at the same time. So I'll probably wait until Ryan gets back or something and then I'll do... Or maybe actually Kill probably do a live stream of Questing Through Chrysalis and then I'll help him with it. So you can check out his live stream and... I can kind of let you know when that goes on. Unless you have notifications on or something like that. Anyway. I'm going to go back here a little bit. I'll save again. I might as well show this too. <laughs> yep, I pretty much brought back Grillies from the original Wonder Tale, but I kind of added in some different characters to it. Okay, yeah. That's all good, Zeno. Uh, and then you can also do, you can also, like, walk in between the seat like this. That kind of took a little bit to work out because of depth issues and stuff like that. And then you can actually interact with the jukebox as well. And I have a whole bunch of jazzy, sort of, Undertale remake, remade songs that you can cycle through. Hey, 
And you can also go through that door, but it's kind of part of the extra content. So I'll cover that later. I will talk to Groovy though. The kid, you seem a bit young for drinks. But feel free to put on some music, some music on using the jukebox. You think that since I wrote all the dialogue, I wouldn't be screwing it up while reading it as much, but still not perfect. And I'll save again, even though it didn't really change anything. Okay, so the one thing I want to do is do something that's not really quite that obvious. But if you go back to this room, after you finish the story, Sans shows up, and then you can talk to him. Hey, yeah. But you weren't expecting to run into me. Am I right? Anyway, you've done quite a lot in the underground. Thought I'd let you in on a secret. You can press backspace to enable some special powers, which I'm sure you'll find pretty groundbreaking. After you enable it, you can also press H to look at all the amazing... Actually, it's Control H now. I should probably change that. To look at all the amazing powers you have access to. I know what you're probably thinking. Why backspace? The reason is because if you've made it this far, there's probably some other spaces you should go back to. And hey, if you check out room test, room underscore test sometime, maybe you'll run into me again. Oh, and if you run into someone named Garamon, would you tell him Sans need to talk to you needs to talk to you about timelines? Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I'll see you around, I guess. Okay, so now I'll talk. Now I'll save. And basically, what happens when you finish the game is it unlocks a triumph by the name of Modifier. And then once you get this, you can press Backspace to enable Test Mode. And then you can hit it again to turn it off. Whatever you want. And... Your modifier triumph will still, uh, you'll still have it even after you, uh, load your game again. So, once you get it, you can pretty much reuse it whenever you want, despite what other context, or what other content you explore. So now, all the things that I can do, if I hit Control h brings up this built-in Game Maker menu where I can do all this fun little stuff. Um, oh yeah, I need to change that. I even made a typo on that, are you serious? Hmm. I'll worry about it later. Yeah, that's what I ended up doing before, I think, was I hit the B key during the Papyrus cutscene on the bridge, and it started playing secret music. <laughs> okay. So... I actually think I'm going to do one last thing. Now, there's a room test, but I think there's a room test too, if I recall. Bit of a time tale spoiler warning, not like it means anything, because nobody knows what the heck. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there isn't a test too. What the heck is the name of it then? When I switch over to Game Maker Studio, does it switch over on... No, it doesn't. It doesn't switch over. So I can look at stuff on Game Maker Studio, and it doesn't uh, change the layering of the windows, which is kind of odd. Oh, I see. Alright, let's try this again. Room... Fix that. There we go. Room... Test... One... I blame Ryan for that. He told me to change it to test underscore one because I didn't have test underscore one before. Oh, that seems a little off now, too. Anyway. Now you literally just go to the dark room with wind playing. <laughs> you thought you knew how everything would play out? Wrong. You still haven't officially met yet. Perhaps, in the future, I'll be able to formally introduce myself. 
Until then, just leave me to my solitude. Yeah, totally glitch, glitchy uh, darkness right there. I guess that's about the end then, for right now. Uh, I did say that. Uh, well, that will do it for today. Hope you enjoyed this adventure through the Game Maker Time Tales dimension, and I will talk to you all next time.